Have you ever been in a situation in which you've had to reanalyze large volumes of data that keep on changing, and you didn't have a technical or a code savvy person in the room to help you build such an analysis? Well, let me introduce you to a tool called Quiver. Quiver allows you to build analyses and custom dashboards in a point and click fashion, and at the same time allows you to reap the benefits off of a predefined ontology. And that really means that you don't have to worry about SQL statements or joins anymore, but you can really focus on analysis content. In this series, we will introduce you to Quiver. We'll start with a very simple analysis, and then we'll get more complex as the series moves along. Let's get started. In this first video, we will walk you through how to create an analysis using the hypothetical example of flight cancellations at SkyWest Airlines. There are multiple entry points from which you can start a new analysis. Let's look at the simplest one here and navigate to the application sidebar to create a new analysis from there. In order to start the analysis, you will first need to define where you would like to save it. Keep in mind that if you save your analysis in the Your Files folder, your analysis will be private unless you explicitly share it with someone. If you started your analysis directly from an object in your data lineage graph, the analysis will pre-populate with all instances of this object type, such that you can get started right away. Otherwise, and this is what we're showing here, you can add data to your analysis by using the selection menu. Now that we have objects in our analysis, we would like to start to analyze the SkyWest airline in particular in more detail. So we will drill down to this particular airline. Let's begin with a quick overview of all flights that SkyWest Airlines has facilitated over time. To fetch all flights, we'll make use of the ontology and the links to other object sets that have been predefined by our data engineering colleagues. This is the point where you would have to typically join up tables in a non-ontology centric world. If you have questions about what an ontology actually is, please refer to the ontology video of the Foundry Reference Project. So practically, we will need to search around and get all flights which are related and thereby executed by this particular airline. Now that we have all of these flights, we would like to see how many of these flights have been performed over time. For that purpose, let's create a quick line chart. Rather than seeing the tendency by week though, we would like to have an overview by month. So let's adapt that. Great. Now we can give our plot a recognizable title and then style the legend to make it a bit more readable. Okay. Now we know that SkyWest is flying more and more over the course of the last couple of months. It would be great to know how many of those flights are actually being canceled now. For that purpose, let's create a quick pie chart. In our data, we have a Boolean flag that tells us whether a flight has been canceled or not. Let's use that Boolean flag for the pie chart. And to make it easier to understand for non-technical consumers of this analysis, let's also rename the zeros and ones into not canceled and canceled. Now, by looking at this pie chart, I can tell that about 2% of the flights have been cancelled. I would like to now drill down on these flights and explore them further. We will rename this drill down object set to reflect that we have only included cancelled flights. We would like to now have an overview of how many flights have been cancelled over time and compare that to the flights that haven't been cancelled. Let's create another line chart for that purpose. It seems like there is quite some fluctuation in the cancellation frequency. Luckily, we also have information in the data that tells us for what reason flights have been cancelled. So let's now segment our plot to display the proportion of cancellation reasons over time. When we look at the segments, it appears that the weather is a major driver of cancellations for this particular airline. 
Okay, so now let's organize our findings a bit more and clean up our canvas. One very important concept in Quiver is analysis lineage, which is captured in the dependency graph. The dependency graph enables us to clean up our view and not to have to worry about which chart is derived from which object set in the drill down analysis. This also means that we can remove intermediary steps in our analysis from the canvas without breaking any dependencies. We have a separate video on how to exactly navigate the dependency graph, so we won't go into too much detail here, but please check out the rest of our series in order to learn more. Now we can also reorder any chart to best convey the outcome of the analysis. Finally, don't forget to save your analysis. So now, since our analysis is based on object sets that are backed by an updating pipeline, any incoming new data will automatically update our charts. And because we are leveraging the ontology, and specifically the airline's object, we have created an analysis that can be interchangeably used for all other airlines too, simply by selecting another airline from our list. Awesome! Now we know how to build our first analysis in Quiver. In the following videos, we will go into more detail and we will show you, for instance, how to build ad hoc aggregations and also how to use parameters such that you can transform your analysis into a dashboard for end users to interact with directly. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.